Welcome to my channel where I go and actually give you a verdict off top and then I'll tell you my reasons behind afterwards. So for the romantic drama series Obsessed on Netflix, I'm going to go and actually say if you are a target audience member, meaning that you like that type of film or a type of series or anything like that, I'm going to say you should watch at least the first two episodes of this mini series. If you're a casual viewer, not into that type of stuff, and you're really trying to see if this is for you or not, I'm going to recommend a one episode watch. Now, if you want to go ahead and actually know why I would go ahead and actually give these recommendations, stay tuned and I'll let you know why. Obsession is a romantic drama that actually premiered on Netflix in April of 2023. It has four episodes that average roughly about 35 minutes each. It stars Richard Armitage as William Farrell, Charlie Murphy as Anna Barton, Rish Shai as Jay Farrell, and Idra Varma as Ingrid Farrell. The synopsis that I got from IMDb states it like this. A man's desperate obsession and scandalous love affair, he is a man who appears to have everything, wealth, a beautiful wife and children, and a prestigious political career in parliament. But his life lacks passion, and his aching emptiness drives him to an all-consuming, ultimately catastrophic relationship with his son's fiance. Yeah, that's right. I said his son's fiance. Now, this is actually based on a novel, Damage by Josephine Hart. So when I go ahead and actually read a synopsis like this, I watched a trailer and I'm going to go ahead and actually tell you, I'm just a casual viewer of this. I am not the intended target audience for this. If there was a mystery component to this, I might be a little bit more intrigued, but as it stands on there, it seems to be very much of just romantic drama, a triangle, maybe even a square. If you go ahead and actually consider this four sides to it, what have you. So I am definitely a casual viewer to this. And that's my perspective. And I think you should always know the perspective of your reviewer when you go ahead and actually figure out if something is for you or not. Because I like to watch the first two episodes of brand new content on streaming services to see if it's worth your time. I watch so you don't have to. Now, this type of series is actually part of my Varnell Hill series, which means these are series and movies that you know, you may have just went ahead and actually said, you know what? Did you miss me? That's right. Did you miss them? You probably didn't go ahead and actually see the advertising for it. You didn't go ahead and actually get any pub for it. So I'm bringing it to you so you can go ahead and actually review it and go and actually take a look and see if it's for you. So if you like all that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now let me break it down for you. So before I actually go ahead and actually watch this particular series, I have obviously a few expectations that as being a casual viewer that I have to go ahead and actually figure out if it's for me and, and what's going to keep me entertained as a casual viewer. So first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and actually say I need some charisma between the main actors, the, the main love interest or whatever. If there's no charisma there, I'm going to get real bored real quick. Okay. Um, second is you got to make the story intriguing, meaning that don't just have it like a paint by the numbers type of uh, relationship or anything like that. Like I really want to go ahead and actually be intrigued in some kind of way, shape or form to really invest into why I'm watching this romantic drama. Now, being realistic, I'm probably going to be looking for some hot love scenes, sex scenes, whatever the case may be. I mean, if you're going to promise me this and you're going to have to keep me entertained or what have you, at least go ahead and actually give me a little bit of something on there that I can go ahead and actually grab onto. Just being realistic. And then the last component for me, just kind of looking at the way that this series is set up is I want you to go ahead and actually uh, give me something more than the traditional forbidden love type of thing. So put a different spin on it. Give me something that I maybe have not seen before has happened, you know, differently or something like that. Just that type of stuff on there. So those are kind of like my expectations going into the movie. And now what I want to go ahead and actually do is watch the movie. Or just kidding, watch the series. It's a series. And just go ahead and actually see, you know, what I think of it. So let's get to it. So, you know what? After watching the first two episodes of this series, I'm going to go ahead and actually compare this to kind of being like, I would say it's a lot like uh, Fatal Attraction kind of meets Fifty Shades of Grey. And it could be pluses or minuses there, but that's just kind of like the vibe and, you know, what I go and actually glob onto. So that's my comparison, kind of give you a little bit more of where this is going. So let me give you my first, uh, my thoughts on the first two 
uh, episodes there, just kind of let you know what I kind of saw and all that kind of stuff. And then I'll kind of break it down for you on why I gave it the, the, the verdicts that I did. Um, so in the first episode, there's really like no setup to the characters or setting up the scenery or anything like that. They kind of really get into it. They kind of give you a little bit of setup of the main uh, character, the father, William Farrow, and uh, who he is as far as this like star surgeon, which that's actually really a weird thing that they go and actually do here in some of these movies or series out there is that like, there's like these surgeons that are kind of like superstars or whatever. I'm like, really? I, I, I don't know these people and we're like, but whatever. So he's actually set up on that, but they kind of really get into the meat potatoes of this really quick. Not a whole lot of setup in there. And that's sometimes good, sometimes bad, but really notice that off top. You really kind of know where everybody is as far as relationship and all this kind of stuff, as far as who William is and who this Anna character is, you know what the relationship is and you kind of go ahead and actually get the uh factor real quick. Um, they really don't mince words on it. They don't give you time to go ahead and actually, you know, resort to it. It is what it is like, oh, okay, well, here we go. Um, so I really kind of noticed that in the first episode, they kind of, you know, give you a little bit of that anticipation of like, will they, won't they, and all that kind of stuff, but it doesn't last too long because by the end of the episode, we kind of know what's going on or what have you, but uh, I will go and actually say they kind of built that tension pretty decently. Um, the one thing that does kind of feel rushed though, is the jumping into it aspect on there. Just, I don't know in the book if it was, I'm sure they did a lot more setup to try and fill out the characters and everything like that, but it feels like we're on a time crunch here. We only have the four episodes and they don't do a whole lot to go ahead and actually develop some things that they could have in order to really set up some things in there. So I just kind of noticed that that's the vibe that I got after the first episode In the second episode, they kind of lay out the foundation for the relationship and what it's supposed to mean, what it's supposed to be structured as. And it's really structured by Anna, the, the young character in here. And so with it being structured like that, you can kind of see, all right, this is supposed to be the rules and parameters, what have you. And they set that up in the very beginning of the second episode. Um, there's also a vacation scene here. Again, I don't do spoilers, but right after that vacation scene, you will just either you will be like okay with this or you will be like done with this series like there's no in between on there because you it's like oh, okay that's they went a different level with that or what have you so um just it's memorable especially for me it was um towards the end of episode two what i think that they really did very well was they also gave you a behind the scenes look at anna because for the first episode and a half, there was kind of like, she's kind of very, she has this particular front and facade that she's giving you. And then at the end of episode two is where you kind of see what might be driving her and that there might be some more things to her character that makes it more compelling. So those are kind of like my reactions to like the first two episodes, kind of like how they paced out and all that kind of good stuff. Now, let me kind of break it down a little bit more. It's kind of like those different factors. Cause I look at three different factors when I'm judging like different series. First and foremost, it's like storytelling. Storytelling is like based off of the story, the concept, the pacing, is this plausible? Is this, uh, does it seem real? All that kind of good stuff on there to go and actually make me sure how much do they emerge me into the story and tell it well. Second part is acting. I mean, sometimes the characters are written well, sometimes they're not. But what are these actors doing to go ahead and actually draw me into this world? Do I believe them? Do they really uh, do they have charisma uh, to them between each other and uh, off of different things? Um, how are they line delivery? The, just the realism and things like that as far as the acting aspect of it. And then I kind of just go into a intangibles category. Things that I can't quite wrap my head around on there. It's just like a feeling, a vibe or whatever that different movies and series kind of give. And I kind of give that a grade as well, just to kind of encompass things that maybe just don't fit into one of the other two boxes so first and foremost let's talk about storytelling in this one so if we go ahead and actually really think about this one forbidden love and relationships is not a new thing now thankfully there's not a whole lot of tales talking about uh fathers falling in love with a girlfriend of their sons because if that was a trope or anything like that that was very much done a lot that would be like uh um, don't really want to go and actually see that. But with that being a take on it, obviously there's some uniqueness to it and then kind of, they can go ahead and actually go a few different ways with this. Now, like I said before, I felt like they kind of rush into the meat and potatoes of this, meaning that they get you right into the relationship off bat and they don't give you a whole lot of time to go ahead and actually develop empathy for the characters or to go ahead and actually really get a feel for who they are. And in some ways that's actually kind of good because it gets you right there into the story, what have you. But the other thing about it is that I think the characters for me kind of lack a little bit of a uh, touch of humanity by not giving that setup, you know, getting rushed into there. So for me, that was just a little bit uh, off kilter, a little bit disjointed. There are 
times where you don't really go ahead and actually also see like how much time has passed you're kind of led to believe that this is kind of going over going on for a certain amount of time at least within these first two episodes but you don't really feel that because there's really nothing to go and actually time dilate and make you feel that you know the gravitas and how long this relationship is going and how committed people are and what the son is going through and what the wife is feeling on the other aspect of the things like that so i feel like they kind of rush the timing aspect of that and that kind of it loses a little bit of the luster of what should be a more uh, entrenched type of story and feelings and emotions going along with it but Obviously, the story is very much plausible, and so with it being plausible, but very much cringeworthy, I have to go ahead and actually say the storytelling in this, from the pacing and all that kind of good stuff, but with the concept, I'm going to go ahead and actually say that for storytelling, I'm going to go ahead and actually give it a B minus, okay? Now, in regards to acting, I have to go ahead and actually separate the actors from the characters because absolutely the way that these characters are written their motivations their stories whatever the case may be i do not like these characters however the actors that are portraying them uh oh uh, they actually did a very good job uh richard Armitage playing william is very much um an entitled father um, who has all these various different things or whatever but he's you know whether he's in a midlife crisis whatever the case may be on there and he really definitely makes you feel that whole little creepy obsessed vibe or whatever to him like he is entitled to this and he wants this passion or whatever so he's going to do whatever he can to go ahead and actually keep it going and he plays it very well likewise uh charlie murphy as um Anna uh, as as Anna uh, Bereton, I believe her name is Charlie Murphy as Anna equally plays the plotting young temptress very well. She's definitely portraying a damaged woman, as you can kind of tell on there, and she really she she owns the screen when she's on there. Now we'll go ahead and actually tell you one of the best written lines in that whole uh, series, or at least in those first two episodes, uh, was actually in the trailer, and it was a line that was delivered after one of their sessions, and Anna goes and actually turns to William and says this damaged people are dangerous and how they can survive and as you can see that was a well delivered line and it was basically a line almost going ahead and actually letting him know that there's a warning there coming about so uh i thought that that was a well written line i wanted to go and actually call your attention to that um i also like the performances of supporting actors of idra varma as william's wife pippa Bennett warner as anna's friend peggy these characters are very good they kind of counterbalance the absurd emotions and relationship that's going on with anna and william and they kind of counterbalance it with like people that are more reasonable a little bit more worldly and you can kind of see you know where their gears are turning and i really like their portrayals as well so for me when i go and actually take a, all that into a factor what have you and the rest of the characters are kind of like okay nothing spectacular but overall those characters all go and actually allow me to go and actually give acting a b plus on this series and then lastly just kind of looking at the intangibles on this particular series um this is definitely a series that you're gonna have to be okay with dark emotions and actions um and i'm not talking about anything that's you know ridiculous or over the top but talking about like you know if you're talking about like sex things you're talking about like bondage uh, talking about submission things like that obviously a taboo relationship that's something that you have to be comfortable with to go ahead and actually get any type of appreciation or enjoyment out of this uh obviously it's hard to watch a relationship like this unfold with the father knowing that you know dude you're hurting your son or whatever and just that whole aspect of things on there like you have to be okay with that in order to be able to watch this and then the last thing on there that just kind of hit me watching that series is that you have the way that english filmmakers and uh television producers whatever the case may be their shooting style and the way that they capture things versus like hollywood it seemed very much like theirs seems to be english seems to be a little bit more rooted in a little bit more realism a little bit more grimy which is cool because obviously that gives you a more realistic take on it but there's also other times where you would really like the hollywood s thing on there maybe like putting in uh some type of background music or sounds to kind of drum it up a little bit the scening and the lighting is a little when you do it in hollywood there's uh different types of editing and things like that that kind of glam it up a little bit that i wish had happened at certain points of this series but then there's other points where i really like the way that they shot it and so it's just a kind of an interesting dynamic over there and i know that i was probably getting too nerdy and i'm not 
I'm not a uh, person that really understands all the different concepts, but you just kind of notice it in this particular film. That's why I went and actually kind of compared it to like the whole uh, Fifty Shades of Grey type of thing on there because Fifty Shades of Grey was kind of like absurd in some aspects of it, but then there was other points where like, okay, they did go and actually go for the Hollywood flair. It didn't work because the story sucked and the acting was bad, but whatever. But let me go ahead. I'm going go ahead and actually just really thinking about the intangibles. I'm going to say the intangibles in this movie because of the subject matter, because of the cringeworthiness on there. But the fact that there was a very good attempt at bringing this to life, I'm going to go ahead and actually say intangibles is like a B minus for me. Okay. Now, with all that being said, let me go ahead and actually tell you why I went and actually gave the verdicts that I did. So for target audience members, as I said, I'm I'm encouraging a two episode watch. The reason why I say is that this is a well acted series that touches on a taboo topic. It clips along at a fast pace, so you don't go ahead and actually have to drive too long into you know obscure things or anything like that. Um, and if you're into content like this, you'll definitely want to get through the first two episodes to go and actually get the full the full feel of what the relationship is supposed to be, whether you understand the parameters by what they're structured as, and then also the revelation of Anna's character in this to go ahead and actually really feel like okay i know where this character is coming from and that'll really go ahead and actually push you on if you want to watch the rest of the series or not so you definitely want to watch the first two episodes as a main target audience member for a casual viewer i would say the one episode watches enough to determine if you want it because it's well acted and it's only a 35 minute runtime and you're really going to actually get a good vibe if you can tolerate the subject matter or not within that first episode it's really just a matter if you go ahead and actually find the t main two leads charismatic enough to go ahead and actually really want to see where their relationship is going to go and the fallout that's going to occur from it so again for main target audience members watch two episodes for casuals watch one episode and that's what i have for obsession on netflix check it out damaged people are dangerous and how they can survive set me free you stayed for the entire time I appreciate you. I really do. If you do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe if you liked any of this. And if you didn't like any of this, I'm okay with that too. You can go and actually leave me some comments below. Just let me know, you know, where you may have agreed with me, where you disagree with me. Perfectly fine. I'm here for it. Um, if you would be so kind on there, if you don't want to subscribe or you don't want to go ahead and actually share anything like that, it's perfectly fine on there. Uh, but hopefully you made it to the end here and maybe you want to go and actually watch one of my other uh, reviews that I've done. But until the next time, I'll highlight you. Take care of yourself.